Okay, hello everybody. My name is Beverly and I'm about to make an attempt to make what I think is probably the most important video that I've ever, ever made. So what you see behind me is just a whiteboard that I have. And what I'm going to do ugh, is read from it and I want to read from from it because and I have notes here because this is um, information that has happened over the last five years of everything that I've seen and been shown and how it all just came together to me and for me in a way that just um, made me just want to hit my face. When I mean hit my face, I mean lay face down on the ground and just bury my head in the face. I mean bury my head in the ground. My face in the ground. That's how this just cracked my brain. So without any further ado, I'm going to tell you what I'm talking about. All right. In September of 2014, after working at a miserable assignment, temporary assignment, like a three month assignment in St. Paul, Minnesota, miserable hotbed of every liberal agenda on the planet is located in that area so it, it was just this the spirit of that city it is just a um, demonic hotbed in that city just a wicked Sodom and Gomorrah type place with a lot of sleeping lukewarm Christians and people who call themselves conservative people any who aren't seeking God anyway so I was there and I was one of them I wasn't as bad as they were because at least I could look around that place and see that something was not right so I was very, very miserable there, very miserable. So I think I got there in like June, let's see, June, July, August, September. So yeah, I got there late June and by August I was getting ready to leave. No, no, by September I was getting ready to leave. So what happened was I felt this pull on me to throw away my secular movies. And um, I had some television series on DVD and stuff like that. And I just felt like I felt con a conviction to throw them away, which I wrestled with for about three weeks. And then I threw them away. And it was just because I guess I had just started to pray a little bit more. I just started to be because of the misery of the situation. I, and it's not, there is not any particular thing that I could tell you that happened there that would tell you why was I so miserable. Um, people asked me when I got back, like one of my nephews, I was real close to one of my nephews, he was young at the time, and he would ask me, well, what happened? Well, why did you hate it so bad? Because when I came back, I just didn't even want to talk about it. So they're like, um, and I'm like, no, I can't, I don't even want to talk about it. And I thought, and I guess they thought too, I didn't want to talk about it because I didn't, because I just didn't want to talk about it. But when I went to go talk about it, I really don't even have anything in particular that would make you understand why it was so miserable. But it was just demonic presence in that city. It's just an evil, wicked place. It's an absence of God. Just a general absence of the Almighty, the Comforter. 
So anyway, that place got me back to praying. And not just that place, but the times I started thinking about how hard life had suddenly gotten. It wasn't hard financially. It was just hard. It was, um, there were hard economic times for many people. But the Lord had told me years before that to live simply. And then he organized events in my life so that I, I would have to. And I did. So I was more prepared not to have just the bottom all fall out on me. Because I, I just lived simply. Not as simply as I could have, but I lived simply. So um, anyway, I started believing. I started thinking, like just wondering. Just let the thought wander into my mind. You know, could, could this be the tribulation? Could this be labor pains? And so one day, just on a whim, I Googled it. There, here I am. I'm out in Minnesota. This is in 2014, September of 2014. I'm getting prepared to leave there. So it's either late August or into September. I'm getting ready to leave there. And I Google this, and here it pops up. Um, that other people were thinking the same thing. I put in, you know, the tribulation has begun. And then all these videos and stuff popped up. You know, I've talked about this before. So I, um, then I guess I started to watch a few of them. I don't re really remember details. Obviously, this has been four years ago. So five years ago. So then I had, I started having dreams. And I've had dreams from the Lord before over my Christian walk, but um, not like these, not as frequent and not like these, not like these that started then. So when I was in, in um, Minnesota, I had a dream about the gay agenda. I was listening to two people have a conversation. The two people were talking about how the Christian religion was going to be brought down. They were talking about how the Christian religion was bigoted and wasn't loving and that it couldn't possibly be a, a real religion. And um, listening to them, I saw that from a worldly count, carnal standpoint that that would make absolutely perfectly rational and logical sense to anybody who just does not accept the word of God as their as their truth and as their lamp post and as the way if Jesus Christ was not the way for you and you chose in that way you will believe this so I saw that and I saw that this issue was going to bring down Christianity that this was going to become the prominent issue and that this issue by itself, by itself without any other help, was going to crush Christianity. And I knew it was at least in the United States. So um, that was kind of jarring because being there in, in Minneapolis and St. Paul area, which they're right there, like you pass in and out of the two cities imperceptibly, um, I never saw so much so many open displays of homosexuality ever in my life. I, I mean, you never went anywhere without seeing a flagrantly um, gender-bended person, a man behaving or dressed as a woman, or a woman behaving and dressed like a man. It was everywhere, and I never, ever in my life saw so much of it. And then you felt the oppressive demonic presence of you better not say anything about it that's the first time I'd ever experienced that so that's what happened in September of 2014 so I was awake the Lord had my attention and it had started before that um, at the beginning of the year it started with you know, me changing the way I ate and 
seeing some things and then it just until it just became a flood and it ended with this so anyway September comes and I go back home and the dreams don't stop the dreams don't stop when I get home so I get home and in October I had um, more dreams I dreamed about the one world religion I had a dream that men were losing their minds that people were just losing it they were literally going insane losing their minds there was one more dream I had, uh, oh yeah I want to find this dream real quick I want to try to do this just moving as quick as I can without um, oh, people are so demonic um, I want to do it as quick as I can without leaving out important things and without losing you all right so um this is so I guess this is so okay also I headed back home in September and I was just so glad to get away from that place and um, so this is 2014 so on October 5th 2014 I um, I heard the word Ezekiel and I read I was gonna make a video and up until that time I had I don't know how many videos I had made probably about let me see I could tell you exactly one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve I had made um, ten videos before that I have ten videos on my channel before that so October 5th I woke up I said my prayers I heard Ezekiel and I was going to make a video because I had been reading the Bible and that's all I was doing just reading the Bible and posting those videos you know they're one of them's three minutes long the longest one is 24 minutes long and I had I was reading and I um, had left off reading in um, Revelation some months before that in March I had last read from the book of Revelation then there comes October all that time went by like I said I was lukewarm didn't know it and you'll see if you watch that video I'm gonna make a playlist of all the videos that I refer to in this video if you watch that video between the video before that that I made in um, I guess March and then the video that I made in October after I woke up there's a whole different um, there's a whole different vibe to me there's uh, just a whole different sobriety it's night and day you see a big goofy Christian in the first one that believes in the pre-trib rapture I didn't know it was the pre-trib rapture but I just didn't consider well who are these people who are running around uh, trying to avoid the Antichrist if all everybody who's saved gets raptured who you know who are these people and then why are they called the Saints and what is this nonsense about the Holy Ghost leaving I just never really thought about it because I, I always had the understanding you know the rapture was the last day but that didn't jive with what I, I did I realized at that time that I had two different beliefs I held two concurrent ideas that conflicted with one another 
And I had to have the courage to get my Bible and risk everything that you believe and resolve those conflicts. I opened my Bible and it took about five minutes. All right, problem solved. Here's this contradiction, but the, it, it really wasn't a problem. After I read it and considered the two things that I held as true, that there are people who are avoiding the mark of the beast during what is described in the book of Revelation as the great tribulation and they're going to be saved because their names are written in the Lamb's book of life. And on the last day, Jesus returns and pours out his wrath. How was that? How were those two things resolved? Well, it's real simple. The last day is after the tribulation. And those people running around trying to avoid the devil are us. Case closed, period. Done all this jigsaw puzzling and all that foolishness. It's the Bible. The Bible is right and you're a liar. So, October 5th, 2014, I was reading Ezekiel. I was going to read Revelation because that's where I had left off last time. About six months before that. So I'm reading in Ezekiel and then all of a sudden, the, the spirit just seizes me while I'm reading about the Lord saying, you know, I send you to these people. They won't listen to you. They won't listen to me. But I, I'm making you a watchman on the wall. And um, whether they hear you or whether they don't, it doesn't matter. Just get their blood off your hands. Cry out to them. Let them know. So I just, like, I basically almost lost it while I was reading that in the um, video. Because, I mean, I keep myself together. But if you really look closely, like, I'm just, like, losing it. Because the... It's like God just has a hold of the reins of my face. And he's just, it's just was, never had an experience like that. So I had to make a decision right then and there. Are you going to go along with these um, people who go along to get along? Or are you going to step on to the path of persecution because you're going to stand for and declare truth. And you're not going to just go get in the corner and be quiet. And I made up my mind that day. You know, Lord, yep. You can send me. I'll go. You can send me. I don't care what they say. I'd rather be in a... Um, the corner of a basement than in a penthouse with a thousand hypocrites. So anyway, that's when all this started. And from then on, um, about three weeks after that, a couple of three weeks after that, and I had the dream about the new world religion. And that was the first dream that I posted on YouTube. On October 26, 2014. It was about the one world religion. All right. So. Continuing on. November. November of that year. This happened on November 14th. Well, in between that time, I had dreams about martial law, FEMA camps, concentration camps, the media, um, all kinds of stuff. But this was the next big one that I had. About uh, two, three weeks after I had that one world religion dream, 
then I dreamed about Obama on November 14th 2014 I dreamed that um, I was working for this guy that I was really loyal to and I, I felt bad for him because he was um, he seemed good and honest and he cared about everybody and sincere but everybody hated him. Not everybody hated him, but there was a, a segment of the population that disrespected him, and it was especially white people. And they just disrespected him, and um, from what I could see, it was because he was black. And so um, I was very loyal to this guy, and he was, in this dream, he was, there was a lot of funny business in the, in the country. A lot of... Um, shipments and weird things being set up and shuffled around things being put in place but um and there was like just a lot of rigmarole about that and then at the end of the dream the my boss he turned and he said in seven days i'm going to blow this place up and as soon as he said that, I saw who he was. As soon as he said that, I was just flabbergasted and I saw who he was and it was Barack Obama, that he was my boss. And I'm gonna link all these videos so you can see the details so that I can just keep moving. Um, so the seven days in the video, I even commented and I saw that he was the Antichrist. I saw a big black throne and him standing to the, uh, him standing with that throne on his left, right? No, he was standing with that throne on his right. And um, it was a big, huge black throne. And then I saw to the side and it said Antichrist, like lit up in like lights, like Hollywood type lights. So I was just astonished. And then um, I had, within a week, either before or after that, I had a, a vision of this, that eye, that triangle that the eye is normally in. I seen that, I seen the eye, but the eye was not in the triangle anymore. It was by itself. And then I heard Osiris, which I didn't, I didn't know what Osiris was. It was a couple years later or, yeah, it was like a couple years later when I finally found out the story of Horus and the Eye of Horus and Osiris and Isis and all that stuff. So anyway, um, so November 14th, 2014, I knew Obama was the Antichrist. Then... And that in seven days, he said he was going to blow the place up. And I also heard the word plasmapheresis, which I knew meant that, that, that whatever weapon or bombs that he had, that he was going to use, they were going to vaporize things. They were going to turn them into ether, just the plasma of the air, nothing. He was going to be able to just vaporize things in seven days so I didn't know what that seven days meant I didn't know if that was going to be literally seven days of time short time I didn't have no clue so then six months after that into 2015 on May 5th I had a dream that there was a massive conspiracy in society and it was so subtle that it was just a feeling that things weren't right and I was flipping back and forth in the dream between thinking that I'm crazy that everything's normal and everything's just as it appears and everything's all messed up I'm just like not knowing just what to believe like it just flipped back and forth sometimes i'm convinced like no this is wrong everything's wrong and then like you know 
trying to convince myself, no, look, everything's just like it always was. So there was some change in society where everything was just a mess. And there were people there trying to recruit me and it was very evil. So then two months after that, two months after that, July 6th, oh, I left out something. Um, in between the massive conspiracy dream and this next dream I'm going to tell you, Obama did the thing where he recognized gay marriage. I'm going to see when that happened. Okay. All right, so that was June 26th. So on June 26th, Obama legalized gay marriage. The Supreme Court struck down all the bans on illegal marriage, and I mean on e illegal gay marriages to make them legal. And then Obama, he signed for it to be legal in all the 50 states. He put his approval on it. Uh, wait, let me make sure I'm saying these dates right. What did Obama do? Just remember there was one Friday that Obama made it official. And I wanna just keep moving. See, now that's after when he was running for president, he told everybody he didn't believe in it. And he believed that marriage was between a man and a woman. But he'd be willing to recognize same-sex unions, but not marriage. Which was all a big lie because he's um, been accused by three men, which are all dead now, of being a homosexual. Three dead homosexuals that said they had religion, had um, relationships with him. Um, and meanwhile, all of America thinks this is wonderful. And we know it's re reached a feverish pitch. And today is, you know, the last day of, of them in t is celebrating an entire month of, of um, celebrating sodomy. And the thing that will get God to just destroy this place. Mm, okay, 2015. I was just thinking. Sorry about this delay, but I... I don't know, I just feel like I need to put these dates all together. Get away from me. Okay. So June 26th, the Supreme Court rules that same-sex couples can marry nationwide. Five to four ruling. Okay, so the four conservative members, conservative members, also um, voted against it. So the four Democrats and five Democrats, four Republicans. So you see what happened. So they wanted that to go to the court so it could be decided. Uh, let's see. So Obama, he, you know, welcomes them all to the White House and says, you know, this is your, 
This is your um, This is your White House. So anyway, he signed, let's see, he signed for gays to be able to openly serve in the military. He did a whole bunch of stuff. All right, I'm not going to waste any more time on it. All right. So this is what, this all started in September. God showed me that we were in the tribulation, that the pre-trib rapture was a lie, and that the the um, the whole outline of the gay agenda and what it was designed to do to just take down Christianity and to make people draw that line. Um, then the next month he showed me Obama was the Antichrist. No, two months after that he showed me Obama was the Antichrist. Skip a year. May 5th, 2015. I saw that there was the, the dream about the massive conspiracy, that nothing was as it seemed. Everything was just a lie, and nobody knew what was going on. The people thought they knew what was going on, and they're just unsuspecting going about their lives, their meaningless lives, by the way, in the dream, meaningless, purposeless lives, just shuffling from place to place. And the only people who seemed to have any clue about whatever might be going on were all the wicked people. They're the only ones whose lives seem to have any true purpose. Then, um, then gay marriage becomes legal in all 50 states later that month. All right? So about a month after that, on July 6th, I had this dream, which I made a video about on July 10th. I had the dream on Monday, July 6th, and I made a video about it four days later. In this dream, I named the dream, I named the video the um, One World Government Takeover. I named it the One World Government Takeover. And I'm going to link all these videos. Okay. And it said, the beast coming very soon. Warning, the beast is coming very soon. One world government to take over. So in this dream, on July the 6th, published on July the 10th of 2015, this is what happened. I received an email in my email account and it was telling me to go and follow a link to get myself protected, to protect my privacy and to protect um, my personal information and that there was some international event, there was some international incident that was like an emergency and everybody needed to go on their computers and follow these links in order to protect themselves. And it was almost like everybody was in a panic, but they weren't really panicked. And um, but everybody was really concerned because it was going to cost them a lot of money. They had to protect their money. And as soon as everybody did that, I was very suspicious. I, when I got the email, I was very, very suspicious. I could see that the email was truly from the government, but um, I still was suspicious because um, I'm very protective of my privacy, as we all should be, even though there isn't any way for us to protect our privacy. We're in a surveillance, we're in a surveillance state. You cannot protect your privacy. No 
nothing you can do. You can, if you go on the internet, you, nothing you're doing on there is private. Nothing that you post is private, nothing. And you don't even have an expectation of privacy. The internet is public. And it should be public. Anyway. And you should be mindful of that anytime you go on there and put anything on there. It's not private. It's just like if you go to the mall. You don't go to the mall and expect people to, to respect your privacy. You're out in the mall. You don't want something known, don't say it. If you don't want something known that you're doing, don't do it. So anyway, um, the, the email said, follow these links. Okay, so I was real suspicious. And then I looked closer at the email and I saw that the dates that it had on it were saying that this, this horrible thing had happened that necessitated all of this, that we needed to go and make all these changes and change the privacy settings on our computers. Um, I saw that the date that they had for this event, this supposed event, hadn't even come yet. So what happened was somehow I had got the email too early that tipped me off that this was fake. It wasn't real. There was going to be a false flag. And they were going to use that false flag to get everybody to go and dismantle all their privacy. And the... Um, Uh, they was going to lose their privacy and oh and as soon as they did it as soon as everybody went and clicked on that thing in their computer the USA no longer existed as soon as everybody went and clicked whatever it was the links that they followed and as soon as they did those clicking and agreeing and whatever they had to do the USA did not exist anymore we had were officially in the hands of the one world government we were in the hands of global government at that point and the um, thing that was doing it, it was, it was the UN. I said, but I said it was like the UN, but it wasn't the UN because it was more powerful than the UN. And the UN was voluntary, but this thing was not voluntary. It was the power. It was the world power. And you could not fight against it. There was absolutely nothing. They had absolute power and control. And the U.S. no longer existed as soon as that happened, as soon as everybody went in and made, made that agreement with this. And then at the end of it, I said, oh, and I forgot to say, I don't know if I said or not, this is going to be in seven days. This is going to happen one week from now. So I didn't make any sort of connection to anything. I didn't. I just made the video. I knew it was really important because it was hard for me to make it. I don't know. It just some. I don't know what kept messing up, but something kept messing up. And I was having trouble uploading stuff and all that. So I never made the connection between the one week from now. I knew that was going to happen in a week. And then I, I remembered later, like this week when I started having this pressing need to make this video. This video right here that I remembered that Obama said he was going to blow the place up and he was going to use his weapons, his plasmapheresis weapons to vaporize everything. That was in a week. That that was in a week. He was going to do that in seven days. And then this was going to be in a week. Okay. Now, that was in 2015 that I had that dream. Meanwhile, oh, the organization that was doing that, that had all this power now, their, their symbol was the gay pride flag. So I'm hoping you're seeing all these threads that are running through everything God has shown me. Tribulation, the gay agenda, um, 
Obama, the internet, technology, the occult, Osiris, all these threads that are just strung all through. So next, 2016 comes along. There's more things that I'm not, that I'm not going to name, obviously, every single, you know, hundreds and hundreds of dreams I've had. So here comes April 2016. April 14th, 2016. There is a law passed in the European Union. called the GDPR. This law is adopted and becomes the law. And this law, I'm gonna put videos in there. Feel free to look it up, do your own research. It's called the General Data Protection Regulation. And what this law is, it caused massive panic throughout U.S. businesses. Yes, you heard me correct. Correct. The European Union passes a law that panics U.S. businesses. And I never heard of this law at that time. This is something that I find out by digging when did this law come into effect. And it was in April 14th of 2016, they passed this law. So just keep that in mind. It's a regulation regarding online data, the, who can have it, what you can do with it, who owns it, all that. Laws regarding it and huge penalties, huge penalties that could literally put your business out of business. So that law is adopted, April 2016. And at that time, they say, we're going to, this is a massive, massive law with very, very serious penalties and consequences to businesses. So they gave them two years to become compliant with the law before there would be any fines handed out. All right. So, about a month after that, about six weeks after that, Britain, the United Kingdom, has a vote by their citizens, 18 and over, who are eligible to vote. They have a vote of whether or not they want to remain a part of the European Union which at that time was 28 countries. And you can look it up what those countries are. Countries like France, Germany, Switzerland, Italy, Greece, Romania, Spain, Portugal. Um, Belgium, it's 28 nations, including the UK, which is the United Kingdom, or as what, what we usually call it, England or Britain. And at that time, 28 nations all joined together into a united Europe. They had a common currency, which Britain opted out of and kept their pound. So the rest of them operate in the Euro. And they have an area, they call it the Eurozone. And it was all billed as something that would be good for the people and good for business and good for economy, good for the economy, good for jobs of all those nations if they would join together and cooperate into something like what the United States is. And if you look at the area, it's about the size of the United States. Some of those countries are no bigger than some of our states. 
I don't know how population compares, but the physical size of it is about the same as the United States. So they passed that law in April. In May, um, what happened? Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. It wasn't in May. They passed that law in April about this thing called the GDPR, which is the privacy thing, which I didn't know it at the time, but it was what I dreamed about because I never heard of it. No one heard of it. It was just slipped in in the midst of, see, this is how they do stuff, in the midst of America wrestling in the mud over it between Hillary and Donald Trump and Britain and their conservatives and their liberals fighting about whether they should remain a part of the European Union because that was during the time when all that immigration was going on and that's another thing that was going on in Minnesota why I was so miserable they had a lot. They just were into all those liberal policies. They had a ton of immigration, just all kinds of social welfare. The place was just a hot mess, a godless mess. Any place highly liberal that you, you're going, there's not going to be any logic, any thinking, any self-preservation going on. They just go along with whatever sounds fair. Sounds like we're being nice and tolerating everything except for righteousness. So, April, they passed that law. It's buried. Nobody knows about it. It's huge. But it, it makes no news. And you know why? Because we're all distracted by these two clowning puppets slinging mud over who is going to be elected as the U.S. president. That's what we're doing here, and that's the same thing they were doing in England. The um, Their liberals and their conservatives were also in a wrestling match. Not really, but they were putting on this show for the people, just like ours did, because it was already determined Trump's going to win. It was already determined that they're going to let the conservatives win. Because the anti-liberal, that anti-global, um, you know, drop your borders and let's all just join hands and be one big happy world and wrap ourselves up in a, a big rainbow t-shirt and a beach towel and, and, and let the Pope put devil horns over you. Join his one world religious suggestion that he had. That's all just. We've all been serving the same God. This is what the false prophet was saying at the time. So um, they're having their own, they're embroiled, embroiled in their own bitter liberal versus conservative battle, which just like ours, the conservatives seem to win. Um, so on May, on May 24th, May 24th, 2016, I had a dream that Donald Trump won and that everybody thought that they had made a better choice and that he was going to be able to fix things. And they just thought that they had saved the country. They and we're going to be able to go back and undo all the damage that that Obama did because he ruined the country. That he ruined the country and, and we elected him, but now we're going to fix it with Donald Trump. But in my dream, it wasn't going to happen. Everybody thought it was, and they were on their way to this new place they'd never been before, and that we weren't ever coming back to where we were. We were never coming back to where we were. And um, he wasn't, I knew he wasn't going to change the country and people still were not seeking God. They still didn't recognize that all the stuff that had happened to us 
happened because we were sinning against God. And only turning to him could reverse it. Not electing a conservative or a proposed or purported conservative because he's he's just all in on it. It's all just a planned deception. It's all just something staged because there there is a swell of people saying, hey, wait a minute. We don't like this direction that this country is headed. What are we doing? You know, our economy is a disaster. We don't have any jobs. These kids are coming out of school. They don't have jobs. They're um, saddled with debt. Housing is overpriced. Healthcare is overpriced. In spite of the fact that the first thing Obama came in and did was healthcare reform. Again, with a big, massive law of regulation that just took over healthcare. Again, what they said they were doing for us was protecting our privacy and giving us rights. And all they did was ruin health care. Ruin it. This is why I'm not in health care right now. This is why I refuse. All right. So I dream on May 24th that Trump was elected. I made a video about it on, um, on August 15th. In between those two events, the British held their vote and they voted, the people voted, to leave the European Union, led by the Conservative Party. People were taking a step back toward conservatism and out of all these liberal policies, they thought, and they're like, no, we don't like this direction. We don't like this global open border um, welfare state direction. We want to turn around and go back. So that's what they thought they were doing in this vote. They call it Brexit, which means, which is like a little uh, shortening of Britain exiting the European Union, that united Europe, the united Europe, the bringing back together of the um, Roman Empire. So... Um, like I said, their Brexit and our Republican victories, both upsets, both surprises, um, well, I don't know if Brexit was a surprise, but it was extremely close. It was uh, 52 to 48 that they won by. And the their prime minister resigned. And the queen appointed a woman named Theresa May. She took over and supposedly, um, he, he announced he would resign the very next day on June 24th, the next day after the, after the, um, uh, uh, the vote. So then Theresa May, she was appointed on, um, like two and a half weeks later on the 13th of July of 2016. So now at that time, we're still, America is still in their campaign. And it's Hillary versus Trump, all heated and everybody's all upset. And I wasn't, I didn't have a TV. I didn't watch the news. I didn't know anything about it. My brother was the one who had to tell me who won the next day. So anyway, they're going back and forth. Lord already told me Trump was gonna win. So for that reason, um, you know, I believe that Obama would actually leave office, but I didn't think it mattered anyway, because I knew they didn't want that. I knew that this Trump thing was just something that they had to do because people weren't ready to just lay down their borders and put all their trust in this global government. They weren't all ready to just wave their rainbow. And, and be so gullible yet. So I believe that they were going to do that because 
I knew they wanted to do martial law. I know they I know they wanted to create that unrest and have everybody, you know, take to the streets and riot, and then they just come in and take over, take all the guns and take over. But they couldn't do it because um the sentiment wasn't there. It wouldn't have it wouldn't have went over because everybody knew that um it wouldn't have been a legitimate vote. No, no one would have accepted it because it would have looked too contrived. And plus, everybody's ears were all abuzz with all this Obama's the Antichrist talk. And there's, they're going to do martial law. And he's not leaving office and all that. And if they had done that, then everybody would have known the Bible was true. Everybody would have known that God was speaking to prophets and... Um, be warned, this guy's the Antichrist. So he had to take it down. He had to back off and to come at this because the devil is one thing, and the Bible says it's subtle. He's got everything has to be smooth because that's how you get away with stuff. You don't get away with things being a bumbler. He's slick. So they went to their plan B. And, and trust me, this was not some um, scrambled, half-baked, put-together um, attempt to, you know, scramble and regroup. They already had a plan B in place just in case this happened. There's no organization, good or evil or otherwise, is going to um, set out on such a huge task as taking over the world without having some plan B's in place. Nothing successful works like that. So that's what they did. In case the country's not ready, in case people would not be willing to accept this martial law thing and it just, people weren't ready to riot and all that stuff yet so people were suspicious so they had to go with what their plan B was was to let the elections go forward let the conservatives think that they have successfully rolled back the clock and that we're going to go back and we're going to be a, be a pre-Obama world again which we were never ever going to be because like in my dream, when the Lord showed me Obama was the Antichrist, he had put those shipments in place. And once he put those shipments in place, he didn't care that he revealed himself to me because he knew he could not be stopped. Those, the things that he put in place, the laws, the statutes, and the things that he did, he knew that they were ironclad and, and it didn't matter if people, it was just a matter of time. Those laws were going to guarantee what was going to happen from there.